Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're joining us now, you are joining the Regimen Pro webinar with Dr. Diane Burson. And we are going to be speaking out about the top six products and skincare ingredients that you need to know about. So as you can see on your screen, the very first product Dr. Burson is going to be discussing is Emapel by Biopel, but she's going to go through each of the main ingredients from this day's um, most popular skincare products so you can be more educated to talk with your patients. So I see a lot of you joining right now. Before we get going, um, I will um, announce tell you a little bit about Dr. Burson in case you're not already aware. And I will point you to the bottom of your screen. There's two features. There's a chat feature and there is a Q&A feature. So this Q&A feature is where you want to submit any questions that you have for Dr. Burson and she was going to do her best to answer as many as possible when she's done with her presentation. So without further ado, let me start telling you about Dr. Burson. Hi, Dr. Burson. Hi, thank you so much. So Dr. Burson's a board certified dermatologist. She's been practicing dermatologist for over 30 years, although she does not look like it. She takes beautiful care of her skin. She's going to teach us all today. She actually has a thriving practice in Manhattan where she does medical and cosmetic dermatology. She's on the faculty at Cornell College. She's been teaching medical students and residents almost since the beginning for more than 30 years. She's a board of directors with the AAD, previously for the ASDS. And really, she's always had a really big interest, not only in acne and rosacea, but also in skincare. It's something she's very passionate about, whether she's recommending skincare for someone with acne or someone that wants to turn back the clock a little bit with aging. She's um, brought Regimen MD into her practice right almost in the beginning when Regimen launched. And she really loves it as it helps her guide her patients with skincare, uh, which is not always easy to do in a small Manhattan office. So without any further ado, thank you, Dr. Burson, for joining us, and I'll hand it on to you. Uh, thank you, Reese. I want to thank you all and thank Patty and Ruth for inviting me to speak tonight uh, on behalf of Regimen ND. And I know you all heard uh, Ruth's lecture a few weeks ago. She was amazing, and you'll have Patty uh, in a couple of weeks. And I just want to give a shout out to Ruth, to Daldi, not only is today her birthday, but she had her first grandchild, Jack, born yesterday. Uh, so she's now Grandma Ruthie, and uh, we have a Grandma Ruthie in my life. So um, congratulations, Ruth. I wanna thank you all for having me. We have a lot to cover tonight. I was asked to cover six different um, products that we carry in regimen, um, products that I will use in my practice and love, and really go through with you the science of all the ingredients. So. I'm going to try to go a little bit briskly so I can cover everything and still give you a chance for questions. Uh, I love treating patients with all conditions, especially acne, rosacea, pigmentation, anti-aging concerns, but I think skincare really is the root of all that we do when we treat our patients uh, in dermatology. And I've loved being a part of Regimen because I can actually have my patients get what they need uh, and always have have product wherever they are uh, and never run out. Um, I, like, like others that you'll be hearing from, love to layer and to combine products and ingredients. And so this is why we as dermatologists need to understand what the ingredients do, what the skin type of the patient is so that we can really prescribe the appropriate regimen uh, for our patients. But one thing you wanna remember when I go through this is the notion that in the morning you want to protect and at night you want to repair. And so all the ingredients will fall under the category of either protect or repair. And as you'll see, many of the products contain ingredients that do both. So the first I'm going to speak about is Emapel. Now we all have estrogen receptors, all of us women and men, but mostly this is about women. We have estrogen receptors in our skin on fibroblasts and also on keratinocytes. So they're responsible for improving skin rigidity, elasticity, for maintaining hydration, uh, because the fibroblasts increase the ground substance of the dermis, for maintaining epidermal thickness, extracellular matrix components, including collagen, elastin, and fibrillin, because these all come from fibroblasts, increasing moisture retention, again, because fibroblasts stimulate hyaluronic acid and humectants in the dermis, and thickness of the skin layers, 
What happens after menopause is first, we have a tremendous loss of collagen, about a 30% loss in the first five years after the development of menopause, and then an additional 2% loss per year thereafter. And so obviously a lot of our female patients who are developing signs of aging, such as wrinkling, are developing this because of estrogen loss. A lot of them think that it's just due to old age or to sun damage, and a lot of them haven't made that link with estrogen deficiency. But as a result of loss of estrogen receptors, women can experience dryness, collagen loss, increased wrinkles, thinning, atrophy, even itching and impaired wound healing of the skin. Why is this important? Well, women are living longer and longer. Mean life expectancy, which is now 76.8, has increased 30 years since 1900, but the onset of menopause has only been delayed by five years. So women are living longer and longer and longer after developing menopause and therefore spending a larger and larger percentage of their life as postmenopausal women. The statistics are that 6,000 women are entering menopause each day, and by 2020, which is now, 46 million women would be over the age of 55 in the United States. So it's nice to give women an estrogen type treatment, but a lot of our patients don't want to use hormones. They don't want to use hormonal therapy orally or topically. So Amapel has come up with a technology called MEP, which stands for methyl estradiol propanoate. And this is a synthetic estrogenic sterile ester. It's not an estrogen, it's not a hormone. It's basically an agonist and it interacts with the estrogen receptor on all of the skin cells. So it mimics estrogen, but it's a non-hormonal treatment. So if you see on the left, when we treat with estrogen, we get all the benefits on the skin, increased moisture retention, increased elasticity, increased collagen production, but then we get the potential side effects because estrogen goes into the bloodstream. MEP, which is a different molecule in synthetic, to the receptor looks the same. And so it binds with the estrogen receptor, giving you all of those skin benefits, but it's quickly degraded into an inactive carboxylic metabolite and then just excreted. So you're getting the benefit of using an estrogen without using a hormone. And this is a biopsy, which is really fascinating, of a fibroblast after having MEP applied topically. And this is the basis. Look on the left, you see a fibroblast in postmenopausal skin that's lost all of its estrogen receptors. But after treatment with MEP for 14 weeks, you see that these receptors have been reawakened from dormancy. And so it actually can stimulate the receptors and therefore stimulate fibroblasts and keratinocytes to make skin look younger. As far as the Amapel line, there are two products right now, a serum, which we usually recommend in the morning, and a cream, which we usually recommend at night. And if you look at the ingredients on, in the serum, we have 1% MEP, 4% niacinamide. Ni niacinamide is a powerhouse ingredient. It's a vitamin B that functions as an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. It uh, stimulates barrier pair, so it's great for barrier integrity. Vitamin C, E, and ferulic acid, which are antioxidants. And then peptides, which also stimulate collagen for repair, and hyaluronic acid, which is a humectant. So this one serum, has antioxidants, which can protect the skin, niacinamide and hyaluronic acid for barrier and integrity, and then MEP and peptides to stimulate collagens. Uh, I usually recommend this in the morning and I recommend the cream at night. The cream is a little bit different. It contains double the amount of MEP, 2%, double the amount of niacinamide, 8%, and it also contains retinol in the form of hydroxypinacolone retinoate. So you have um, MEP, which is a repair ingredient, retinol, which is a repair ingredient, along with matrixyl, which is a peptide. So patients who use both of these in the morning and night find that their 
skin integrity is better, their wrinkles are better, their tone and texture and their pigmentation are better. But again, I tend to layer. So I might use one of these in my patient along with other products that we're gonna talk about. And certainly for my drier skin patients, I like to recommend the Emapel Night Cream. And for my oilier post-adolescent post-menopausal patients, I actually recommend the serum. And here are some clinical results uh, after eight weeks. The next product I'm gonna speak about is TNS Advanced Plus Serum. I'm sure most of you on this call are big fans of TNS Essential Serum. It's always been a favorite uh, of us dermatologists uh, and basically utilizes growth factors from human fibroblasts to stimulate collagen production. Uh, in this newer formulation, we still have the two chambers, but one of the products that comes out is not orange as it was in the first one, and it also doesn't have any odor. So the newer Advanced Plus Serum combines the advanced growth factor technology that was in the original product line, but added in other ingredients along with making it colorless and odorless. So the advanced serum contains a growth factor blend along with the peptide complex, which again are both repair ingredients, but also combines them with botanicals, marine extracts, and antioxidants. So the ingredients in this newer product line include French flaxseed extract, Spanish marine exopolysaccharides, two peptides, microalgae extracts, uh, a ferment lysate, and antioxidants. So again, like the original TNS, you have antioxidants, which protect, and peptides and growth factors, which repair. But now we have it in a colorless and odorless product. In testing so far, this product line has been has done great, it's become very popular, and patients see the improvement in their skin usually as early as two weeks uh, and love the way it feels. Now this is a little bit of a busy slide, but it basically shows you on the right all of the ingredients that I just mentioned, and on the left, all of the areas of the skin where these ingredients can benefit. So again, they can stimulate fibroblasts for collagen and elastin production. They can stimulate recycling and protein hemostasis and increase uh, the ground substance of the skin and protect the skin from damage. In studies of this newer product line, you can see that improvements were noted at week two, but for patients who continued using the product twice a day for 24 weeks, which was six months, you can see a steady benefit in terms of global fine lines and wrinkles, tactile roughness, overall hyperpigmentation, tone, texture, photo damage, and evenness of the skin tone. And so basi basically patients are extremely happy with this product line and it's doing very well. And this is a photograph of a patient showing improvements at week two and a photograph of another patient showing improvements at week eight and you can see some tone and texture improvement, as well as improvement and freckling and pigmentation. So again, this new product line takes growth factors along with botanicals, antioxidants, and I think it's a great product line for our patients who are interested in prejuvenation as well as rejuvenation because it goes on nicely, it's very light, it's not greasy and heavy, uh, and it has the right mixture of ingredients. The next product line I'm going to speak about is Sente. And one of our favorites has been the Dermal Repair Cream. The Sente Dermal Repair Cream contains something called HSA or heparin sulfate analog, which I'm going to explain. But basically these work in conjunction with growth factors to stimulate collagen and elastin but they also have anti-inflammatory and hydrating properties. What's nice about Dermal Repair Cream is because it has such nice hydrating product properties um, and it's a very soothing product, it's a very non-irritating product and it's one of my go-tos when I'm dealing with patients with rosacea who tend to have sensitive skin and are interested in an anti-aging product. This is the one I usually pick because it works in conjunction with growth factors to stimulate collagen and repair the skin, 
but it also is a nice soothing formulation that's great for patients with sensitive skin. The newer product in this category is their Dermal Contour Pressed Serum, which is also nice for sensitive skin, which, contain, which combines their heparin sulfate analog with other uh, dermatan and chondroitin sulfate analogs that I'm going to explain, but I found this to be a great product for tightening the skin for some of my younger patients who want to add in a little firmness and already have decent collagen that they can um, work with and de decent fibroblasts that they can stimulate. So as far as this product line, it's based on heparin sulfate which is a naturally occurring molecule in the body. Again, it works in conjunction with growth factors to stimulate collagen and elastin. It facilitates cell matrix adhesion, but it also stimulates extracellular proteins, hyaluronic acid, ground substance, which are all humectants that hydrate the skin. Now, basically the original heparin sulfate is, is too large to get through the skin, and it's also negatively charged. So what they've done with heparin sulfate analog is bioengineered the heparin sulfate at a lower molecular weight to make the shape such that it can penetrate into the skin. The size is smaller, and they've added positive charges. So this heparin sulfate analog can get through the epidermis and into the dermis. And basically, there are three benefits to this ingredient, and they include hydration, anti-inflammatory benefits, and collagen-stimulating benefits. So as far as hydration, the heparin sulfate absorbs and retains water in the dermis. It essentially acts as a humectant and acts as a scaffolding to combine the fibroblasts and the elastin and hold in moisture and water in the skin. And therefore, it acts as a barrier repair ingredient, both in the epidermis and in the dermis. Heparin sulfate also promotes repair and structural integrity by stimulating fibroblasts and helping growth factors stimulate fibroblasts to promote collagen and elastin formation. And finally, heparin sulfate actually has anti-inflammatory properties. It can down-regulate pro-inflammatory factors and therefore decrease inflammation, but also by absorbing water and hydrating the dermis, that also helps dilute the inflammatory mediators and therefore helps to further decrease inflammation. So again, this dermal repair has been a big favorite of many of ours, especially again for those with sensitive skin. The newer product, which is called Dermal Contour Press Serum, I personally love, I use it every morning. And basically it's a combination of heparin sulfate analog with two skin firming ingredients, dermatan sulfate analog and chondroitin sulfate analog. And these are related, but they're extra ingredients that again help stimulate the ground substance and the glycosaminoglycans in the dermis to further hydrate and strengthen the dermis and smooth out the skin. So basically, you're going to stimulate your collagen. It's going to work with growth factors. These products are anti-inflammatory. They're hydrating. They help repair the epidermal barrier. And I use them in combination often. I should say that Sante also has a very nice retinol serum called BioComplete Serum, uh, just so you know the whole product line. And so again, you can end up using these all um, Together, I would say I tend to use the Dermal Contour Press Serum more in the morning because it's a light serum that's very tightening and makes the skin look tight during the day while it's working. And I tend to use the Dermal Repair Cream more as a moisturizing product at night for those, again, with sensitive skin who want anti-aging. And this is, again, the bottle of the Dermal Contour Press Serum. And patients definitely notice that their skin feels a little bit better hydrated and a little bit more firm. The fourth product line I'm going to talk about is the Alpharet family from Skin Better Science. And we know Alpharet has won all these awards. Uh, it's become a very popular product line very fast. The Alpharet product line is basically their retinol. Now, we all know that we can give our patients prescription retinoids for anti-aging, and we also can give them alpha-hydroxy acids 
for anti-aging. But very often if you combine an alpha hydroxy acid with a retinoid, patients can become irritated. So what Alpharet did was combine alpha hydroxy acids with a retinol. So they took lactic acid to replace alcohol and lactic acid and combined it with the retinoid to make a product called lactyl retinoid. And in the second phase, the ethyl alcohol is fused with lactic acid to create an alpha hydroxy acid ester alcohol. And then that ethyl alcohol is combined with the lactic acid to make ethyl lactate. And in the final phase, the two conjugates, ethyl lactate and lactyl, lactyl retinoate, are combined and to form our final, which is the ethyl lactyl retinoate, or ELR, which is the alpha ret technology of essentially giving a patient the benefit of a retinoid and an alpha hydroxy acid in a product that's very well tolerated, very mild, and gives them clinically all the benefits of the retinoid without the irritation. So the benefits of retinoid include fading pigmentation, tightening the appearance of pores, smoothing out the tone and texture of the skin, stimulating collagen production, and improving the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Alpha hydroxy acids act as exfoliants to further smooth the surface of the skin, but they also act as humectants to hydrate the skin. So you're getting all of these benefits. And when I wanna give a patient a retinoid, and I want to stimulate their collagen and give them all the benefits of the retinoid, this line, the Alpharet, is very well tolerated, has been very well received, it's very well priced, and, and patients love using it. And this is something I obviously prescribe at night because I like to give retinoids at night. But interestingly, it also contains niacinamide, antioxidants, and therefore it has ingredients in it that will protect the skin while also repairing the skin. It actually also contains ceramides, which are also hydrating and epidermal lipids. And so therefore you have a, a product line that has a retinol, that has AHAs, but also has these anti-inflammatories and antioxidants and ceramides and barrier repair ingredients that make it a very well tolerated product. And as you can see from this study, you saw improvement of erythema, dyschromia, fine lines and wrinkles, skin tone discoloration and pore size in patients who use this over a 12-week study. And this is patients who use this every night. Now there is a stronger formulation, um, their intensive formulation, which has a little bit more glycolic acid. Um, but so you have the regular alpharet and then the intensive alpharet, which has a little bit more glycolic acid. And that might be beneficial, for instance, for someone who has some extra pigmentation. Uh, but keep in mind that Skin Better also has their entire line. Uh, they have Alto, which is an antioxidant that's used in the morning in conjunction with alpharet, which has vitamin C, vitamin E, 17 other antioxidants, and that targets infrared light as well as visible light. Uh, they have a skin lightening formulation and they also have nice hydrating peptide moisturizers. So you're going to get these benefits using it alone or using it in conjunction with your other products. Uh, again, I love layering and combining different products or using it with the other products made by Skin Better. Uh, and this is a picture of a patient after eight weeks and you can see an improvement of pigmentation, a little bit more clarity and radiance to the skin and certainly a lightening of the hyperpigmentation. Another real big favorite, especially because of COVID, have been the Alpharet exfoliating peel pads. These are at-home peel pads which patients can use uh, and they can use them a few times a week. It depends on your patient's skin type and, and what their problem is that they're treating. Uh, it's great for patients with acne, great for patients who have poriness and oiliness, but it's great for anti-aging. The key ingredients in the peel pads include the alpharet, which is the patented ingredient that contains the retinoid and the lactic acid. It contains extra lactic acid for exfoliation, glycolic acid for exfoliation, 
And salicylic acid, which is my favorite peel ingredient for my patients with acne and rosacea, salicylic acid is lipophilic. It gets into the sebaceous follicle. It loosens up a lot of the debris. It gets rid of a lot of the sebum and oil. And it's also anti-inflammatory. It's related to aspirin. So it's great for patients with acne and rosacea. I have a lot of patients who come in for their peels, uh, whether they're doing for anti-aging or whether they're coming in for acne and rosacea, but a lot of patients who come to me and during their visit, I will perform a peel. So during COVID, when I was doing my uh, telemedicine visits, I was able to have the patients go on the site and get this peel and get close to what I was doing for them in the office, if not really pretty much similar. So this was very popular during that time. And here you can see a patient who used the peel. And after only a few weeks, you see healthier looking skin, brighter, more radiant looking skin, the skin looks smoother. And again, the patients even will notice that their pores feel a little smaller, probably from the exfoliation and from the uh, collagen stimulation from the retinol. So this has become very popular. Uh, the next product line I'm going to discuss is called Discoloration Defense, and this is a product from SkinCeuticals, uh, and this is for treating all types of hyperpigmentation, whether it's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, whether it's photo damage and freckling, or whether it's melasma. This product line inhibits several of the pathways in, that are related to stimulating, stimulating melanogenesis. We do have a limited number of topical ingredients that can effectively address pigmentation. They include retinol, kojic acid, glycolic acid, niacinamide, which I mentioned earlier is a powerhouse ingredient, and of course our gold standard, hydroquinone. Niacinamide, as I mentioned earlier, is a powerhouse ingredient because it's a B vitamin, it's an antioxidant, it's an anti-inflammatory, it has barrier repair properties, it stimulates filaggrin, but it also inhibits the transfer of melanosomes from melanocytes to keratinocytes. So it's very helpful for fading hyperpigmentation. So as far as this new product, Discoloration Defense, which is a nice serum made by SkinCeuticals, the novel ingredient in this is tranexamic acid. And we're starting to see tranexamic acid in, in more and more skincare products, but there aren't that many with it. Uh, and tranexamic acid is a synthetic analog of the amino acid lysine that competitively inhibits the transformation of plasminogen to plasmin, which is the molecule that degrades fibrin. So what you're having here is an intersection of the pathways of producing melanogenesis and the plasminogen pathway. Um, you know this is something that's given for menorrhagia and excess bleeding, but there's an intersection of the pigmentation pathway and the plasminogen pathway. So we're finding that tranexamic acid, topically and orally, can be very helpful for some patients with real stubborn melasma. So the mechanism of action is that it inhibits the release of inflammatory mediators specifically prostaglandins and arachidonic acid, which are involved in melanogenesis in that pathway by intersecting with that pathway. And tranexamic acid is one of the novel ingredients that's present in discoloration defense. It also contains kojic acid, which is inhibitor of, tyro of tyrosinase, the way hydroquinone is, but it's a little bit more gentle on the skin. It's a naturally occurring substance derived from a fungus. It's widely used as a skin lightener, uh, and it, again, it inhibits tyrosinase. It's safe and effective and very well tolerated, and it works very well in combination with the other ingredients. Again, niacinamide is included in this product line, which inhibits the transfer of melanosomes from melanocytes to keratinocytes, and therefore helps fade pigmentation. Uh, and it is a very potent inhibitor of tyrosinase activity. And then there's an enzymatic exfoliator included in this. How else can you improve hyperpigmentation? Well, not by just inhibiting tyrosinase or inhibiting the transfer of melanosomes from melanocytes to keratinocytes, 
but also by exfoliating the outer layer of skin. A lot of pigment resides in that outer layer of the epidermis. Some pigment is only epidermal, sometimes it's dermal. But for pigment that's epidermal, using something that exfoliates the outer layer of skin that's keratolytic is going to also even out the pigment and fade some of the hyperpigmentation. So HEPI's 5% will exfoliate and therefore help even out the pigmentation and it also has its own hydrating properties. And in the clinical trials performed by SkinCeuticals, you can see clinical improvement across all the markers of discoloration, whether it was post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, hyperpigmentation due to lentigenes, photo damage, and sun damage, melasma, and you also saw improvement of skin texture and skin tone, which was probably due uh, somewhat from the niacinamide and from the exfoliating ingredients. And here's a clinical picture of a patient uh, after 12 weeks of using discoloration defense. And you can see not only an improvement of the pigmentation and clarity and brightness of the skin, but even an improvement of the tone and texture of the skin. Uh, and the final ingredient that I'm gonna speak about is Trihex technology, which is the basis of the Elastin line of products. Uh, so Elastin utilizes something called Trihex technology, which combines a lot of different peptides, mainly tripeptide and hexapeptide. And as we know, peptides help stimulate collagen and elastin production by fibroblasts. But what they also do is help clear damaged collagen and elastin and damaged ground substance. So the product line, the product that I like most in this line is the Elastin Nectar, which we use for pre and post procedure. If you start a patient on the Nectar pre-procedure, the idea is that the peptides help clear some of the damaged and clumped collagen and elastin that exist in chronically photo damaged skin in the dermis. They also help decrease MMP and help remove some of the whole damaged dermis, all the, um, the, uh, the ground substance that's been damaged. They prep the skin. And then after the treatment, such as a, a fractional laser or a CO2 laser, stimulate wound healing by stimulating fibroblasts to make collagen, ground substance, and elastin. Um, so you have tripeptides, a hexapeptide, which again improves fibroblast proliferation and function. You have phosphatidylserine, which reduces MMP, increases procollagen, and reduces glycation end products. And then an ingredient called oleopian, which is an antioxidant that also reduces glycation end products and clears damaged proteins. So again, when you have chronic sun damage, you have fragmented collagen, you have degraded elastin, and you have advanced glycation end product accumulation. And this results in reduced elastin and collagen production, clumping of debris, formation of fine lines and wrinkles, thinning of the epidermis, and you lose some of your extracellular matrix. And when you apply the tripeptide hexapeptide uh, ingredient to the skin, you get clearance of the debris by the tripeptide and hexapeptide, increase in procollagen by the phosphatidylserine, and anti-glycation activity by the antioxidant oleopurine and phosphatidylserine. The end result is stimulation of new collagen, thickening of the epidermis, greater skin elasticity, and an efficient extracellular matrix. Now this the product that I mentioned is the post-procedure nectar, and it's basically anhydrous. So that means it contains no water. So first of all, that means it's very well tolerated, and we put it on directly right after the laser is performed, whether it's a laser or a peel. It's, performed, it's put on directly after the laser because it's anhydrous, so you don't have to worry about contamination. And patients love the way this product feels. It's very silky and very smooth. And a lot of them actually like to continue to use this as their moisturizer even after they've 
had their two week period after the laser. So again, the hexapeptide uh, causes elastin binding to the cell surface, keratinocyte migration, fibroblast proliferation, and attraction of monocytes and macrophages to help in dermal clearance. The oleropian is derived from olive leaves. We know that olive is a polyphenol, and we know that polyphenolic flavonoids are extremely potent antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. So this is going to help calm down the skin after a cosmetic procedure. We see major anti-inflammatory properties uh, and also decreased reactive oxygen species because these are very potent antioxidants. And again, inhibition of uh, glycation end products. And these are just some biopsy staining of patients who've used the tri uh, the tripeptide combination, and you see increased collagen, and here you see increased elastin after the trihex was applied twice a day. Uh, and this is a patient after a, a fraxel repair. You can see at baseline, the day of the procedure, four days post-procedure, and seven days post-procedure uh, in the patient who used the nectar. Um, and this is another patient post-treatment with fraxel. Uh, I just want to briefly mention the other two product lines. Uh, the newest product line by Elastin is called Enhance, and it's a post-injection serum for patients to use after they've been injected with fillers. It also contains the same peptides and anti-inflammatory ingredients, but it also contains some ingredients that will help prevent uh, bruising, such as Annika Mont Arnica Montana Extract, uh, that contains flavonoids and that helps decrease bruising and it contains some of the potent anti-inflammatories and antioxidants. Um, it also contains lactoferrin which is an antimicrobial and so therefore if you're worried about the potential let's say for biofilm you have a product that's anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial and that also helps present, prevent black and blue. And then finally um, elastin has a line to use post-procedure after body contouring procedures. So if you're having uh, any of the freezing or the radio frequency um, for um, body contouring, their product line for, for this helps basically um, streamline the lipids and break down the lipids as an extra thing that patients can use after they've had their body contouring procedures. Um, and so this product line is called Transform but all of their products are based on the trihex technology, which is essentially peptides stimulating collagen along with anti-inflammatory ingredients. So I know I covered a lot, um, but basically all of these product lines do contain the ingredients we're looking for, the antioxidants and the anti-inflammatories in the morning uh, and the collagen stimulating uh, ingredients at night, such as retinol, peptides, growth factors, and of course, uh, the estrogen analog, that's a non-hormone. And of course, it goes without saying that we need to add in sun protection with all of these, and most of the product lines that I discussed have great sun protection products, and you'll often just pick which one you want based on the patient's skin type uh, and their tone and their texture. For instance, Elastin has a nice tinted sunblock that we give patients to use when they're using the nectar. But all of the product lines I mentioned have great sun protection products that I personally use uh, and that I use for my patients. And I can tell you that I've used all of the products that I've mentioned, obviously not just for my patients, but for myself, because like Ruth and Patty, I am a layerer. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Burson. Wow, that was a ton of great information. I hope everyone enjoyed it. So don't sign off. We have two really exciting things. One, we have time for Q&A now, so you can start submitting some of your questions into the Q&A um, on Zoom, and we can ask them for you, for you. If you're for some reason calling in and you can't find where to do that, if you submit them on chat, I'll still make sure they get handled. And number two, don't forget we have a giveaway for some products for those of you that are attending, so please stay on for, until the end. We're almost done. All right, so to get started, um, Dr. Burson, first question. Can you please explain the order 
you use to layer products? It changes. Um, it depends on the patient, the patient's skin type, the patient's issue, uh, whether it's hyperpigmentation, whether it's general anti-aging, whether they have rosacea or acne, whether they have poriness or oiliness. Um, it can vary, but in the morning, I usually start with an antioxidant serum. Uh, and then I will end with sun protection. And all the other ingredients that I mentioned will be layered in between. So I'd say I start with the antioxidant and end with the sun protection. In, in, in the middle would be uh, some of the hydrating products and some of the products, let's say, for hyperpigmentation. So I would use the antioxidant and then my product for hyperpigmentation and then my sun protection. Um, at night, again, it depends on the patient's skin type, but I tend to use the lighter ingredients first and the heavier ones last. So I might use the lightening ingredient uh, and then the peptide and then the retinol or growth factor and whichever one is a cream would come last and whichever one is in a serum would come first. But at night, I have no problem using a peptide or a growth factor along with retinol. And very often I will put the retinol on last because I think of the hydrating ingredients or the anti-inflammatory ingredients going on first, making a retinol or for instance, a prescription retinoid um, better tolerated. And we've all seen studies that show if you use a barrier repair product before a retinoid or a retinol, it'll improve the tolerability without negatively affecting the efficacy. Uh, so I can't go into all the brands that I use, but uh, for instance, I would use my antioxidant, my Sente firming serum, my um, lightening uh, discoloration defense, and then my DNA repair sunblock, um, tinted or non-tinted. And at night, um, I might use my uh, growth factor, peptide, uh, and then my retinol, and then my Amapel, because it's, it's a cream. Uh, if, for the oilier patients, as I mentioned, I use the Amapel and the serum. So you just, it becomes a gestalt. You know, we're, we're all, we're all, we've all been trained. We all know the ingredients. We all know the skin types. Just look at the patient, see what the issue is. If they're sensitive, you're going to give them a product that's going to be less irritating and that might be better for their barrier repair. If they have discoloration, you're going to want to give them antioxidants and some of the lightening ingredients. Okay, that's great. Um, thank you so much. All right, here's another question. Have you seen any problems with elastin nectar post-procedure? I've seen some reports of issues with silicone deposit reactions. I personally have not. I haven't had any reports of issues. And, um, uh, you know, I, I hope that if someone has an issue that they have reported it, uh, especially to the company and it, you know, certainly we should all know about it. I use it for most of my post-fraxal patients uh, and I have not had a problem, I've seen a reaction. Okay, great. All right, so how do you decide which product to recommend for which patient? I know that's a broad question. Yeah, and sort of, it's, it's sort of the same as the first question. Uh, uh, if someone has oily skin and, and large pores, I'm going to stick with the serums rather than the creams. If someone has hyperpigmentation, I'm going to use the ingredients that help with pigmentation, such as niacinamide or kojic acid or tranexamic acid or retinol. Uh, if it's more tone and texture and wrinkles, I'm going to stick more with the peptides and the growth factors and the retinol. Uh, and if it's a postmenopausal patient with wrinkles, I'm going to you know, stick with the MEP and the MPL. So it's really a matter, you know, you can have a young patient who's an acne patient who has oily skin and large pores, or you can have an older skin, an older patient who's postmenopausal, who's very dry uh, and has very sensitive red skin and deep wrinkles. And so what ingredients you're going to pick and what products you're going to pick for them are very different. And the other thing is when you're treating patients, Sometimes their skin changes, and that's what I like about Regimen MD, uh, Regimen Pro, so that I can start them on a specific regimen, and as one parameter in, improves, uh, I might 
switch them from something to a different product. And so my regimens are changing. They're changing as the patient's condition improves. They're changing uh, as the seasons change. In the summertime, they might need more serums. In the wintertime, they may, may need more creams. So, um, you know, I might use one of the heavier products in the winter. Uh, as they become less red, I might add in a retinol product. So you really just have to look at the patient and look at the condition. Don't give them the kitchen sink. I start them usually on a few products, uh, no more than a couple in the morning and a couple at night, but then I love to add and layer. Um, and again, what I love about the site is that I can tell the patient, okay, I'm gonna take this out and add this in and they can just go home, add it in. I write everything out for them, but they have their regimen written out for them on the site also when they go on it. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so let's see. Um, which tinted sunscreens are your favorite? So I have a few. Sente has a great tinted sunscreen. Um, Elastin has a great tinted sunscreen. I love Isden's sunscreen, which is based on DNA repair enzymes. They have one that's non-tinted and one that's tinted. Um, SkinCeuticals has a matte sunscreen that's tinted. And Skin Better has a compact that has a tinted SPF 46. And I can tell you, I've used all of those and I really love them all. And the funny thing is, that's my makeup. I wear those to my office every day and my patients say, you know, what are you using? I say, this is my sunscreen. So um, if I forgot, oh, and total, de total Defense and Repair also, which is made by uh, Skin Medica as a great tinted sunscreen. So really all, all of the product lines I've mentioned, I think for Amapel, Sente, Skin Medica, Elastin, SkinCeuticals, and Skin Better, they all have tinted sunblock products. Oh, I love them too. I wear them every day. Um, <laughs> All right, so because elastin nectar is an anhydrous, I, yeah. that right? Do you typically add a moisturizer post procedure? No, I have them. Do you mean, well, I don't know if you mean the same day as the procedure or in general after, but um, I have them use just that uh, as their post laser uh, product. Uh, and I, for Fraxel, for instance, I have them use that until they're finished peeling if it's in 1927 or until they're not red anymore. Once they're over that uh, acute phase, the first, let's say, anywhere from five to seven days, then I do switch them back to their original regimen and I do add in a moisturizer and I switch them off the nectar. Uh, Lastin also makes a very nice moisturizer. But as I mentioned before, a lot, of the, a lot of the patients like the way this feels, so they like to continue it as their moisturizer, but I usually do switch them to one of the other moisturizers um, but then they keep this because they might be doing clear and brilliance or they may be doing peels. And I have them usually start it before and then continue it after. I see. Okay, so let's see. Um, oh, are any of those tinted sunscreens non-comedogenic? I think that they are all non-comedogenic. Whether they're labeled that, I'm not sure, but I am someone who had bad acne and I still have acne prone skin and uh, I break out. Um, yes, especially under my mask and uh, hormonally, which doesn't happen to me anymore, but I am an acne prone individual and I use all of them. And none, they all, none of them have caused a problem. And I'd say none of my patients have developed any issues with any comedogenicity with those. Okay, beautiful. All right, two more questions. So what about patients who are allergic to sulfa with the products that contain sulfates? So sulfates, not sulfones, right? Um, obviously, if someone has a sulfa allergy, um, they shouldn't be using sulfa products. For instance, we always got this question with acne, you know, about um, axone and dapsone not being able to be used in patients who are sulfa allergic, but it's a sulfone. So it's a, if they're sulfa allergic, they shouldn't be using sulfa cleansers and sulfa products. Um, I'd say if there's any doubt, you either just don't use that product or have the patient first test it. Some of these product lines do provide samples and I usually test it either in the inside of the wrist or in the preauricular area. Great. 
Very helpful. Okay. And is it safe to use growth factors in patients with AKs or skin cancers? There's a million dollar question. I mean, there are some patients, there are some dermatologists who are big believers in growth factors and there are some who are not comfortable with growth factors. And that's because you're stimulating cells. And the question is, are you stimulating the good cells and the bad cells? I, I don't know if I'm in a position to answer that. Um, I know that there are those who are concerned about that. And all I can say is the good news is there are other collagen stimulating ingredients available for those who aren't comfortable with growth factors. Um, my, my patients have done well with it. And um, I, I can't think clinically of a patient who's rapidly developed more AKs while they were using growth factor products. And so I'm comfortable with them. But again, if you're not comfortable, there's a lot there's a lot of products to choose from, so. Okay, great. Well, before we end, I know that this um, webinar was supposed to be helpful for people who want to speak more technically or get technical uh, questions from patients. So you gave us a lot of scientific detail. How often are patients really asking questions that are, that are at any of this level? Do you think anyone should be intimidated about starting to talk about it? And what if the patients start asking more? No, patients ask us, but not only patients ask us, people ask us wherever we are 24 seven. I mean, this is what we're asked about. Um, you know, you tell, you, if you don't want to be asked these questions, don't tell anyone you're a dermatologist. Everyone wants to know about what ingredients to use, what skincare to use. Um, definitely our patients want to know and they want to know what they're using. And um, some of them are ingredient savvy and some aren't. Some will just say, tell me what to use. I want to look better, whatever you say I'll do. That's one extreme. And the other extreme will want to know every single ingredient that you're giving them and what it does. So um, I, I think though it's important as a dermatologist to understand what all the ingredients do and, and how these products work and what they're gonna do for the patient. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I gave you some insight into how the different products work and, and, and how the different ingredients work. I, I would be remiss to not mention that the whole reason why we're here is, is, is Regimen Pro and the Regimen MD portal. And I have to say, it's been an incredible uh, addition to my practice because I love skincare, I love prescribing things to patients, and I like the idea that a patient does not have to run back into my office when they're out of something, that they have continuity. And let's face it, we know this from acne studies from my early days 30 years ago, you're not gonna look better unless you're compliant and you use everything. So you can have a kitchen sink full of ingredients, full of products. If you, don't lose, if you don't use them, you're not gonna look better. So we want our patients to use what we recommend. And we know in our heart, if they use exactly what we recommend, there's no question, hands down, they're gonna look better. They're gonna be so pleased and happy with how their skin did. And so using the site, allows us to ensure that patients will do exactly what we want them to do. We don't have to worry about them running out of a product on a weekend and then forgetting about it and not coming in to get it. And so I, I, I really wanna thank um, both Drs. Tadaldi and Farris for starting this company and making it available to dermatologists like me and I hope everyone else. And it just makes everything so much easier and everything really makes sense. On you. Thank you so much, Dr. Burson. That's incredibly helpful. If anyone has questions about Regimen, if you want to pop um, your name and email into the chat, I'd be happy to have someone contact you. If not, we'll be reaching out to you, thanking you. And there's, um, there's a button to contact Regimen on all the emails you've all been getting. And we'd love to talk about helping you integrate it and try it with your practice. So with, without any further ado, let's get going to our giveaway. So thank you for all of you that stayed on. We do have six really great products to give away. And I think the easiest way to do this is going to be when we shut down this survey or this webinar, there's gonna be a little survey that pops up. So please answer in that survey, give us some of your feedback. And then at the end, just make sure that you put your mailing address. So if you are one of the chosen winners, we can mail your full size product to you. So again, we're gonna be giving away one of basically each of the main product lines that Dr. Burson um, taught us all about today. So one from Biopel, one Elastin, one Sente, one SkinCeuticals, one Skin Better Science, and one Skin Medica. 
So thank you all again so much for your time. Thank you, Dr. Burson. I really appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their afternoon or morning, wherever you may be in the world. Thank you and stay safe, everyone. Okay, bye.